<laughs> oh my god! An unsafe oxygen level. So this is usually when some other gas is depleted or displaced the oxygen somewhere else. So full restraint is the one that you should be aiming for. That is an instance where you would have like your harness on and it is physically not long enough that you would fall off an edge. Right, are you legend? I've worked in heaps of different construction sites and usually the message is safety first but some sites are better than others and it doesn't always go to plan. So I'm gonna break down some of the craziest construction fails. Let's do it. All right, looks like we're off to a good start. Oh, mate. Oh, dude. There is no way. That guy there is legit I'm assuming he did not get crushed. Wow, that is super, super close. What's actually happened? So what's going on here? They've got a forklift connected to this huge beam and it's like connected to this small little jib crane on the end. I think what's probably happened is that they've, they've lifted it up when it's low and you don't have that like cantilever effect because it's so low to the ground. When they've lifted it up, of course, you've got that like tilting that fulcrum effect. So it's obviously hasn't been engineered correctly, but I mean, these guys are so, so lucky. That is crazy. Oh, I've seen this before. This is insane. Check out all these little supports here that just dropping off and then it just pops out at the bottom. Oh, dude, that is so dangerous. This reminds me of something that happened in Melbourne with a company called Grocon. It's on a smaller scale, but there was two fatalities. They actually had a brick wall that fell down whilst people were walking past. So it can happen anywhere. It's just like, how? How does something like this happen? Particularly in somewhere like Australia, when we have some of the strictest safety laws. I mean, it's just insane. If you guys know where this is, by the way, leave a comment below. Insane. What the? <laughs> Dude, I... <laughs> so many times I, I have gone into a roof and accidentally missed my foot and thinking that I'm going to step through the plaster. But this is a false ceiling. I mean, usually you wouldn't be in a false ceiling or because there's no supports to actually get inside. I'm assuming that there's some sort of platform from the side of like inside the roof and he's accidentally slipped down. But thankfully, fingers crossed, not once, not once have I fallen through a roof yet, yet. <laughs> oh, dude, whoa, okay, stop. Okay, so I can tell you exactly what's gonna happen here. It's a, uh, may have um, friend of a friend. All right, so boom operators need to be very careful about the center point of their machine. And much like the first clip where we had that really high vertical center of gravity, well, this one actually has that horizontal one. So any movement that we have at the base or the point of the fulcrum is going to exponentially rise at the other end. So if you go over something like a gutter, maybe, you're gonna get a fair bit of movement on the other end. So let's check it out. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't have a harness on either. Oh my God, he didn't know. Uh, yeah, so obviously you should be wearing a harness as well. <laughs> yeah, do the right thing, wear a harness. Okay, obviously there's a guy in a manhole. Okay, so two, two massive things straight up is that one, there's a massive fall from heights because I don't know how deep it is, but obviously there's a fall from heights. So you should have some sort of barricading around with like a harness attached to him potentially. And then also confined space, confined space. He's got no rescue equipment. He's got no crew with him. Dude, what happens if you've got like a depletion of oxygen or something, or you get some sort of contaminant entering that actual atmosphere? What the hell? Yeah, just finish what you're doing, mate. No worries, you'll be fine. Okay, so the construction supervisor's over here. G'day, mate, how you going? <laughs> yeah, you just finish up what you're doing, thanks. Dude, get him out. Get him out! Ugh. Okay, so if you're not aware of what a confined space is, it's a big deal in the construction industry and it kills like hundreds of people per year just from lack of education. So the definition of a confined space is an enclosed or partially enclosed space 
that is exposed to normal atmospheric conditions and is likely to contain some sort of contaminant or displacement of oxygen or the risk of engulfment. That is it. So if you want a copy of this, I'm going to leave a link in the description, but essentially this is the matrix for defining whether you have a confined space. And essentially you need to actually answer true to A, B and C and then one of D and then it is confined space. So let's go through and check out what our guy was doing and whether he was in a confined space. So A, is the space enclosed or partially enclosed? Yes, it is. <laughs> B, is it likely to be entered at normal atmospheric pressure? Yes, he's lifted off the lid and it is open to normal atmospheric pressure. C, does the space have a limited or restricted entry or exit? Now, sometimes this is a bit of a contentious issue, but essentially if you're using something to get in and out of the hole that would not normally be there or something like a ladder, then yes, it is restricted. You need to use your common sense with this one. That is true to A, B, and C, and now D. Does the space contain, or is it intended to contain, a harmful level of atmospheric contaminants? And this could be like a variety of things. It could be something like a biological hazard if you're in a sewer, uh, potentially if you're in a pressure vessel, whatever contaminant or whatever gas was in there prior, that could be the contaminant. So that's possible. Um, an unsafe oxygen level. So this is usually when some other gas is depleted or displaced the oxygen somewhere else. So you could have a low or even a high oxygen level. And then substances that could cause en engulfment. Now this is usually to do with like farming and engulfment from grain silos and things like that. So no mm -hmm. to the last one, but yes, potentially to the harmful level of atmospheric contaminants and also an unsafe oxygen level. So the reason that he has no idea what he is doing is probably because he doesn't even know of a confined space. And it is so, so dangerous to actually get in a space where you have no idea of what the oxygen levels are or whether there is some sort of harmful contaminant inside of it. Just don't do it. <laughs> Check out this bloke. <laughs> Look at the workers just looking at him. I can't tell you the amount of times someone has walked through my work site. I mean, look at the, the lack of barriers, though. Like, it's just shut off the whole road. And I think this guy's just going for a walk, just checking it out. I'm going to have a geese. But man, the I've had, like, manholes open. I'm doing confined space. I've got my, my harness on. And people just walk up. They walk straight through your barriers to say, oh, what's going on? I mean, it is crazy what sometimes what the public will do. And look at this guy. This guy is just having a good old look. Oh, my God. That is so scary. So most of the videos that you're going to see online of this stuff is usually from a high voltage switchboard and that's that's because there is more potential energy in high voltage than there is in low voltage. So that is below a thousand volts AC, at least in Australia. But the potential energy that can come out of a low voltage if you actually do get an arc flush is massive, which means like heaps of damage. More recently, we've had some really big steps in arc flash when we're talking about low voltage stuff. And that's mainly actually come from the commercial and domestic industries when people are live testing. I would be right, what is the, why is he opening a cabinet? What is he doing? Just run. I don't, I don't understand. Run away. Man, look at all that molten stuff. Okay, actually, I don't know if you can see from the video, it's a bit dark, but actually he's lashed this here to the actual pole itself, which is, which is good. I mean, that's what you got to do. It doesn't look all that safe. He's using an aluminium one. I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't. You shouldn't really, maybe because I'm used to, you shouldn't really be using ladders a lot of the time. You could easily use a boom for this and whatever's going to happen probably won't happen. So I, I would have suspected the bottom's coming out, but it, it's lashed, so I'm not sure. What the? Oh, dude. I mean, that's pretty unlucky. <laughs> I'm not sure what you could really do about that. Except for if you used a boom, that wouldn't happen. Oh, wow. Get out of here! <laughs> oh, 
my god! That is insane! <laughs> oh my god, did they... I didn't even think they could do that. It's like fully exploded. Do you know who is responsible for your safety? <laughs> that is great, I love that. All right, this looks suspect. What is going down? Dude with a car and a thing. Oh, no way! Holy crap! And like, it doesn't even look like anyone got hurt. That is so lucky. Super lucky. All right, yeah, we're framing up a wall. Pretty sure that guy should be holding on at the end. <laughs> Man. Well, I don't even, come on. Like, I don't know sometimes whether to give these guys like the Darwin Award or maybe to give them the benefit of the doubt, but seriously, why didn't you have any sort of supports for this thing? These guys look like they're of a decent age that they should know this stuff. I don't know, how does this happen? Oh, he's fitting a t yeah, I've seen this before. So they um, put like some sort of accelerant around the outside and then they line it up and it magically just pops onto the rim. What could go wrong? I was putting, standing on it so it can go. Oh my god! I mean, what can I say? If you're a tire fitter, can you let me know? This is this is not typical practice, I assume. Like, people aren't just exploding left, right, and center just so you can put a rim on a tire. Like, what the hell? Gosh. What's going Oh, dude. <laughs> Oh my god, I've actually done this before. Not into the ground, but into a wall. I was drilling through a stud, and I hit one of these laundry pipes that were coming down, and I actually flooded their whole bottom level of their house. It was a brand new house that they were in, and new furniture and everything. Man, I was devastated. Oh, baby. <laughs> Who's in charge today? Huh? Who's in charge today? How you doing? I'm in the state of Oregon, Oregon OSHA. Looks like you oh got a little bit of a shoring problem going on. <laughs> there is nothing worse than when someone of authority, particularly like in my country as WorkSafe, turn up. It is panic stations. Man, I, not only do they not have shoring, but like their fall prevention is non-existent. They've got nothing to stop the people at the top going in. The guy in the hole has nothing on. I think they are stuffed. Well, he can't be down there. Exactly. Cool. Okay. How are you going to get him out? Showing or what? Yeah. Yeah, just don't hook that thing. Sorry. Oh, no way. You want to see why he can't be down there? <sighs> That's why he can't be down there. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So... I mean, if you don't know what's going on here, I'm talking to you, solar installers. I see this all the time. So the main issue you've got here is, is fall prevention, the way it's set up. And there are two different types. There is fall restraint and fall arrest. So fall restraint is the one that you should be aiming for. So that is an instance where you would have like your harness on, you would have a lifeline connected to you, and it is physically not long enough that you would fall off an edge. So that is fall restraint. Fall arrest is when you know that you are going to fall, but what you want to do is minimize the amount of fall that you actually have. Now, the issue here is his, his pivot point. He's connected up to what looks like the door or the gate or something, and he's got a couple of meters of line, so that is a couple of meters of fall before he actually gets caught by his harness. <laughs> and that's just the beginning. A lot of people don't realize that you can't be in a harness for any longer than maybe... 20 minutes or so, otherwise you get suspension trauma. And that's because your legs, your main arteries in your legs are being cut off, and that stops the blood pumping around your body. You pass out, and because you're slumped forward, you actually choked to death. So <laughs> this is a huge issue if you're doing any working from heights. Just be aware. I suppose we should see exactly what happens. So look how far he fell. It's, man, it's so, so scary. It's crazy. At least there was someone there, and hopefully they've got some sort of rescue plan in place. So that was pretty insane, and actually a lot of these accidents could have been prevented. But you know what you can't prevent? People that do it on purpose. <laughs>